Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. We're going to be talking about the post-pandemic mindset today. But before we begin, head down into the show notes. We have a ton of things that we're doing nowadays. We have the YouTube channel. We have the -the around-the-world study video reviews where you get to see our pretty faces yammering about books and and fun things. Um, We also have all of our great social media. Ariel's doing book reviews. We have a ton of stuff. So feel free, hit the subscribe button on the podcast. Hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel do a lot of favors. And if you're just starting on your around the world journey, we do have the resource guide down below. This country has been getting a lot of vaccinations. We're starting to get to that kind of herd immunity time frame. Well, or at least we can closer see, to it, yeah. we can maybe see herd immunity at the light yeah. at the end of that tunnel. So we right? want, and the Even last thing, not there. the last thing we all want to hear about is more pandemic stuff. But yeah, you know, true. from the standpoint of homeschooling and a lot of us being, you know, people here being on this podcast, listening to it are COVID homeschoolers. So you, you have begun homeschooling because of COVID, you know, your lives are, all of our lives are right now kind of wrapped up within this thing. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to start talking about how important it is to develop the mindset. Now we don't have all the answers and and, (laughs) certainly not. And what, what we're, what we're kind of really challenging you is, is to start to think about, okay, in the coming months and maybe towards the end of this year, things will begin to unravel uh, in mm-hmm. a good way, and we'll kind of go back to normal. Now, that may not be true about other countries. Or a new normal, at or, least. Yeah, some new normal. And because of that, we want to be able to prepare ourselves, and we owe it to ourselves. You know, I kind of always say this, that you owe it to yourself a little bit of mental time to think about, you know, what life is going to be like then. Just do those little thought experiments. You, know, you could take an hour out, sit in a chair like I'm sitting, nice and comfy. And uh, think about these type of things and think about what this new world's going to look like, things mm-hmm. that are important to you. And the best way to understand going forward into the future is to understand what's happened in the past and understand what you've lost in this last year and a half, what you have gained in this last year and a half. And we're going to talk about both of those. And then some ideas going forward and concerns and, and things you need to be kind of looking out for. And there's probably a lot more. And we'll, we'll love to hear what you have to say in like the show, show notes or you know, in the comments on the Facebook page or, you know, on our Instagram and whatnot. We'd love to hear what you, you think about this as well. Because I think yeah. this is going to become a recurring thing. Just as uh, there's always these recurring themes that keep coming up in all these Facebook groups of like, oh, do, am I doing enough? Am I educating enough? How, you know, am I, is my kid losing a year because I'm a teacher and I'm not really a teacher type of thing? There's a lot of fears and anxieties that always come up. And I think coming forward in the next few months, we're going to be getting into this angst around coming out of the pandemic and how are we going to handle that yeah. because you know we, we've spent a whole year normalizing to the the covid normal and now mm-hmm. we're going to be asked to come out of that and what is that going to do to our psyche to anxiety what is that going to do to our kids what's it going to do to us are we are we equipped are we ready are we mentally prepared for this i mean could you be i i don't know i think it's a, it's about trying to be as well prepared as we can exactly y- you know i don't think anyone's going to have we don't i mean we don't know we could there could be a fifth wave or mm-hmm, whatever knows, and yeah. we could all go back to lockdown i mean you know god god forbid that happens yeah, um right. but it's important for us to think about it uh, you know try to Try to mentally game plan as much as we can. Yeah, I agree. For you know what's coming, what's coming ahead, just for our kids and for ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend. We're going to talk about those three topics: what we've lost, understanding what we've lost this last year, what we've also gained. So because mm-hmm. there's always silver linings whenever something like this happened, and we'll mm-hmm. talk a little bit about the things we've gained in the positive, and then we'll talk about the. The what's coming for coming on the horizon and yeah nobody leaves this unscathed exactly. so I think there's going to be we're going to have baggage with us and maybe some of that stuff we is good that we want to take forward and others is 
Maybe things know. we're willing to leave behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd like to leave behind. It's true. So the first thing, obviously, the thing we've talked about a number of times and the people who we've interviewed on the podcast, a lot of the homeschooling journeys that we've interviewed in the last about five or six months, the idea that this has been more of an isolation school, mm-hmm. that we lack the activities, we lack those enrichment classes. And these are things we know we have lost. Now, some people have been fortunate that they've been able to go back to some some activities like for us you know dance class and gymnastics was opened back up a few months ago because we had you know good numbers in our state and they allowed those kids back in now they limited it to certain age groups yeah They're having it to wear looked masks. very different it is very different than what it was like you know february of last year it wasn't all the same kids that had been in there exactly. she had friends that didn't return it, I did, can't, it definitely I can't, looked different i can't go in there although some you know a, a wrinkle i get to sit in my car and read my books while, while she's in there it's a little nice quiet time for daddy but um yeah so it does look different i can't go in there and watch her i can't enjoy that and those things have been lost for me at least um i enjoyed watching her do her gymnastics i enjoyed watching her do her dance routines and stuff so that's yeah. you know obviously something we've lost obviously any other activities that you might have been doing beforehand that was heavily intensive. Maybe you even participated into it. Like say, for example, if you were in a forest school or if you were into some type of co-op, obviously you lost those type of things. And that's been just devastating to your enrichment because a lot of, for us is that's a lot of time that our, we all understand as homeschoolers, that's a lot of the time that we, we combat the, the boogeyman that we always, we always get told about homeschooling, which is the socialization. And those are the things we use. We know that's how we get our socializations. We get our kids out into the world doing things. And we've had all that taken away. And that's been very impactful. I, You know, we've talked about a little bit of it. We haven't seen the deep impact with our young learners because we kind of have two in the same house. They kind of play together now. Yeah. But, but I can only imagine, you know, the other kids we've seen on the street, they're a little bit older. They've lost that friend network. It, it, it is impacting these kids in, in obviously some measurable way. I don't know if it's impact ours as much, but I think with our older learner in this last year, she's wanted to go out and hang out with her friends, wanted to go do some play dates, and that's been more difficult for her kind of understanding that she can't do that. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, a lot of things closed, and then it moved to an online, like a Zoom school and things, and that's really it's hard enough for me as an adult having, you know, online remote meetings and things with my colleagues and maintaining team camaraderie at work for kids. It's even more difficult for them to socially relate uh, over screen. So that was a really difficult thing. Even if they didn't close the classes down completely, the way that they'd modified them to still keep going lost so much of Uh, of the intangible things about those those activities and classes yeah and we remember when this first happened you know we we had the option to do some zoom classes for her dance class and she just did not connect with that and that felt like a a miss for her like she she lost that opportunity she she was very shy in front of the camera she was very shy in front of the we were using the ipad um, we did find some ways around it. I think she was really uncertain about the small screen. We, when we did the casting to the television, she was a little bit more open to it. It was okay. But it, yeah, it wasn't it, perfect for her. It really, yeah. I don't think for these young kids, it's really, I don't know for any kids if it's great, but definitely for young kids, it was a very difficult time for her. And being able to go back, even though it has been in a modified format, has definitely been a, a huge gain uh, for her. Yeah, we've seen that kind of the, the lighting up of, in the eyes. Um, those two days a week that she gets to go do that for about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, that has been a big change. And so if, if you're in an area where that hasn't opened up, um, do know that, that we've seen our learner kind of really, you know, latch onto that and really excited about going back and getting out back into the world. That's been something that, you know, for us has been a good thing for her. It's been a nice yeah. change. That, that we, And we realized that was a loss because we've seen how she responds to now she has it. It's been it really registered with me that she did lose something there. Now, also friend networks, big issues there. Playing play dates, playing at the park, playing yeah, with other kids. Not not just friends, but yeah. just kids that they would run around at the park. You know, kids have this amazing ability to make kind of insta friends. <laughs> little kids do with other yeah. kids at the park. They all of a sudden they're holding yeah, hands and they're running amazing. around and they're playing. And for half an hour, they're the best friends in the world. And then you know, you all go and you never see them again, but they, they just have this ability to Mm -hmm. reach out and find like-minded kids. And even those non-friends, non-friend friends, 
they didn't have that those opportunities either. Yeah. The next thing that you may have noticed that you lost is obviously your routine. You know, we always have the daily churn. You know, mom or dad comes home from work. We eat some dinner. Maybe there's an activity we have to do. Um, dad's at you know home like I am, or mom is at home, and they're they're doing all their errands and doing their homeschool and going out to activities. And there's always this like there's a cycle, right? And that was obviously very much disrupted. You know, we had the very very acute problem of having big windows on our office door and a one year old walking by and wondering why mommy will not come to me. And she's six feet away from me. Yeah, that was and a challenge. Really. That was a very big challenge up front. And we've kind of gotten around that a little bit now that she's gotten a little bit older. But that that routine and then... I love how you say that. She was banging on the door today as I was I was doing a, a face, a, you know, a video chat with my boss, doing a re- review and talking with him one-on-one. And uh, the baby was like, you know, palm smacking the doors in the background. Mom! Mom, come out. Mom, <laughs> mama, come out. <laughs> so we got a good chuckle over it, but I, I still say, I still don't think that the kids are completely, completely used to it. I think that's still a difficult thing for them to adjust to. Even mm-hmm. our new routine, mm-hmm. it's still, I feel a little bit more of it, but the the kids are still kind of just like flying by whatever we tell them is going on for the day. And, yeah. th- and that's a big part of it yeah. too, right? It's the loss of control. The, the kids don't have the ability to, I mean, not that children have a lot of control in their lives normally, but what control they did have, yeah. they lost through this. You know, the ability to say, hey, I want to go play with the kid down the street. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, can you call my friend? I'd love to get together. Or can we go out to a movie, mommy? Any of the things that they would suggest, all of that stuff was taken away, even the little bits of control. And so we we have tried to give our daughter, you know, our daughters as much freedom as we can and not rein them in too much. Mm-hmm. But I think that that loss of control of, of everything in their world it was a really big blow for them. Well, and that, and that goes back to the the idea of routines, right? W- knowing what's coming up for the day, knowing what's coming up for the week, having that kind of repetitive schedule. We know kids work well with structure. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean you have to be very rigid. You can have kind of a loose unschooling mentality, but do have some structure. And then we know kids work well with structure. There's a reason why my daughter naps every day at two o'clock, right? There's Good routines. They go to bed at the same time. They wake up. They have breakfast. You know, all those good routines, they they gravitate to, and to have their entire world just upset, and then for it to be erratic because you'll come out. You know, oh, I don't have a meeting for the next hour. I'll come out and see how you guys are doing, and then you go back in. So it's like mommy's here now. Mommy's gone, and there's that erratic nature there. Mm-hmm. Or the other day, you had to actually go into the office, and the little one was asking where you were like the whole day. <laughs> right so so you know if she you know while she does playfully interrupt your one-on-one meetings with your boss like that matters but <laughs> you know she she she's used to seeing you now all the time that's her right. new normal right and then you weren't right. here and she was confused well and they're very they're they're very uh, clingy especially you know we've talked about oh, this yeah. with our toddler when our older daughter was seven months, she started going to the YMCA to child care when mm-hmm. you would go and do your workout and got to play with other kids. And by the time she was ready to go to preschool at three, yeah, she, she was like, like Bye, see ya. Yeah. Whereas our toddler hasn't gotten that opportunity. We went out shopping yesterday and you were on the other side of the store for a little bit and the toddler would not stop. Where data? Where data? Where, where data? She started to get panicked mm-hmm. because we're all together so much that she was just so, yeah. even though. So I, I was wearing her on my back in the baby carrier. It was like she was totally safe and secure, mm-hmm. um, but she she doesn't doesn't have that same security that her older daughter did when she was the same age. Just because I think she's used to us all being together all yeah. the time. And I think we'll get more into that about looking forward in, in two sections from now about some of those issues that might might crop up. Yeah. Um. Next thing that we we may see is that we lost all our family time out. You know, like um, I lost my night. You know, you graciously give me one evening mm-hmm. a week. Um, to go out into the world and interact with other human beings, <laughs> adults, adult human beings. You know, I get to go to dinner, maybe check out a movie, maybe write it at Starbucks, just be able to get out of the house and not have to worry about anything. And that all got stripped away. And even if you did, you know, allow me to go back, I, you know, if we, if I was allowed to go back out, I, there's nothing to do. I'm not holding you here, Booza. I know. 
I know. But, but you the, could go back out, but it's like, where would you go? Where would I, I go sit at the park, right? Right. It's There's like, not enough open for it to be yeah. really worthwhile um, to, to go and sit somewhere. It's true. Yeah. Um, there's no, in, a lot of times we have these other events that come up as well. Like not just our normal. Well, it's always routine. something on the calendar. You know, the fair or the, you know, the, the 4-H thing or the. or the, go to the pumpkin patch. Or the pumpkin patch. Or, or going on a trip. And all that was stripped away, right? We know our daughter last year was asking routinely, when are we going back to the fair? You know, when can I go see Santa Claus and get my picture taken? Mm -hmm. And all that was taken away. And so there was, again, we we lost those experiences. We'll have those gaps in all the pictures and that type of thing. that's true. And so those are things that, Again, we lost. We lost those experiences. We lost those type of things. And, and, the, and the looking forward part of it, oh, right? Yeah. We were always talking about, we, we have a big a calendar that we make up in our kitchen area that shows a whole month and we have all our future dates. We always used to say, oh, you know, we're only two months away from the fair or we're only this mm-hmm. far away from this trip we're going to take. And all of that forward looking just was suddenly cut off because there w- there was no forward. It was just, you kind of live in day by day. Yeah. Uh, and that was really hard for them. And the other thing that we saw, and we've brought this up before, about the law, um, behavioral issues, right? So all the things we have mentioned here compound into behavioral problems, right? Where the kids are... They're lashing out. They're lashing out. They don't understand what's going on. Why are mommy and daddy's face covered up when we go outside? You know, just really weird things. It's that hard to occur. explain yeah. to a five-year-old what, or, you know, we... Or let alone we, a two-year-old, right? right? We tried to put this in context. It's the sickness, it's the sickness and we have to protect people and we don't want to get it either. And, you know, we had to try to, uh, but she can't really wrap her mind around it. And I think coupled with that is the uncertainty of all of it with things open back up. Okay. Her preschool wasn't open Mm -hmm. and then it was for a little bit, but then it had to shut down again, right? As our county goes in and out of phases of reopening, it's like, oh, this store is open and next week it's not. And (sighs) all of that uncertainty for us, we understand it. We're kind of trying to roll with the punches. We're trying to insulate and protect our children a little bit from that uncertainty, but they're definitely feeling it when her activities are suddenly called off and she's like, okay, it's Tuesday. It's dance class day. Oh no, sorry. The dance class is closed right now. Well, why? Well, we had to roll back to phase one what does that mean to a a, a, a child right they don't mm-hmm. so all of that uncertainty it's it's one thing to have all these things stripped away it's like okay you went from having them and now you have none of them mm-hmm. it's it, that's one thing but it's entirely another to give some of it back and then take it back and yeah. then you have it and then you don't and all this push pull and then oh some things are open but other things aren't and to them in their mind none of it makes sense right yeah. the library for example we can at first it was fully closed and then it was only pick up things outside now you can go in but all the children's toys are gone and there's no there's no children's reading so there so she's like well, and, and they're observing a ten foot distance. <laughs> yeah, the library is very, very. You have to shout. There's sort of like a tin, very conservative. There's like a tin can, the tin can string <laughs> communication system. But it's funny because she's like, "Well, mommy, um, you know, her favorite thing. The library had these really great kids chairs and yeah. it had some really cool kids, kids like play area and, and all bra- that stuff. Just, the, just the the thing that we used to do. Go pick out five books that you want to read. Right. She can't do that. Right. So right. it's weird. She's like, I can go in, but I can't go look at the books and i mean she can go look at the books but all the kids stuff is gone and so she's like you know for her she doesn't understand all of it we we understand the rules but it's a great deal of uncertainty for the kids that they i i I bet our daughter feels like she's playing by a new set of rules each week and and that's just that kills me because we're Mm -hmm. trying our best to make this a you know, not as, as good of an experience as we can yeah. to try to protect her. Well, I think your word of, of, of insulating, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of that stuff. You know, we, we, we can't go, you know, going out to the grocery store was a thing for me, right? That's for me to take the kids out and go do something, go shopping for, you know, wonderful meals I want to make for my wife, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be, or go to, you know, go to Walmart and maybe get like some coloring books or some crayons or something like that. You know, I, it was always something to do. Right, I could go a couple times a week, spend an hour, wander around, look at stuff with them, you know, get a gallon of milk while we're there, that type of thing, or going out to, I don't know, the the farm store or the whatever store, right, or the go to Lowe's and get some mulch for the front yard. Yeah, those were things that I did with yeah, them. Yeah, errands were kind of activities that you did with them. Yeah, before. and I enjoyed doing those things with them and taking them out and you know having them experience things and help me pick things up and take things home. It was for me, it was educational in some weird form but that all got taken away and you know 
then we start doing the pickups at the stores and and the food pickups and so they're on they're, you know they're sitting in the back of the car and some weird strangers putting groceries in the back of the car it's just compounding the uncertainty like what is going on this world is so strange these days right yeah. i'm i'm finding that it's really been helping me a lot to try to explain more yeah when i say no about something cuz we find that we have to say no a lot now mm-hmm. a lot more than we used to because you know one there's things we literally can't go out and do and and two there's we're so together all the time and cooped up that <laughs> they're invariably getting into stuff because they're bored and things and so there's a lot of no and I've, i found lately just really explaining to her do yeah. you know why i said no let me explain why because there's always a reason yeah. and that's helped a little bit i yeah. mean it's hard they're young and you kind of think i, I said no and we can't or, so just to, let know, it to go be, to be honest you're so tired you don't want to go into the like no you're not supposed to jump off of the thing onto the floor right it's at least 70 percent of your height that is super dangerous <laughs> i can't handle a broken femur right now please don't do that and, right. I, and, I, and i don't have the energy to say all of that and i just say please stop doing that oh i <laughs> want to play like, with my best friend you know that i haven't oh, seen in eight months yeah. no you can't or, she, or you know? she'll pull out a name from a year and a half ago and i'll struggle to remember who that is she goes no daddy that was my friend at preschool can't i played with her that one time can i play with her again yeah. i'm like what? Who? Right. No, you can't it's... play with them. I'm sorry. You know, it's like, why, Dad? And you're just, you're like, oh my gosh. And it's, it is, it gets very frustrating. So like, it, it just, it's, com- and they see that frustration, and it compounds on top of it. And again, breeding more uncertainty. So you know, that's kind of like a mega list of a lot of, and you can probably think about what you've might have lost. Might be different. It might have been a financial hit. Mm-hmm. A parent might have lost a job. There might have been a lot more uncertainty. Or a uh, uh, gosh, you know kids out there who lost a loved, loved one, one to yeah. COVID and trying yeah. to deal with that or that who have really an uh, immunocompromised yeah. uh, family member. And so, you know, no matter what the easing of restrictions, they're still going to be in lockdown and trying to explain that to your kid when everyone else gets to go out and play and they exactly, don't. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many different unique family situations and, and different impacts mm-hmm. just across the spectrum. Um, but, you know, everyone's got their own individual. This is just what, you know, what we were talking about for our family exactly uh, that we had noticed. Yeah. And now let's talk a little bit about the gains, you know, with every, every bad thing, there's always something to be learned or, or there could be something gained, something that you can change or tweak, you know, spending a year, over a year and a half together in a house. I love how it's a year and a half for you. It's been like a year and two months, but but I think you feel like you're like it's been forever. Okay, so I'm gonna let everybody know. You know, I was you know I was on the Reddit's in January of 2020, and I knew about this thing well ahead. I knew of about it too because our supply chains in China were China. having a problem. Yeah, so for work <laughs> before it actually hit, before we got that first one of the first cases in the country was in Snohomish County, right, 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 right down the road from us, and you know, you know, you're on. I I like to dabble in some weird stuff and and whatnot. I saw that and this may be coming. And so remember, I, I hit, love how you said dabble in weird stuff. You're just talking about reading Reddit. Yeah, so reading was, Reddit reports. It yes, sounds like yeah. you're you know st- dabbling in the dark arts or something. <laughs> you're, you're 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 literally paying attention to a subreddit. Me, me me in the house of Slytherin. We were we were hanging out <laughs> looking in the cauldron. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but like remember, I hit the. I remember I went shopping at uh, Costco in February. I was like, this thing's coming. We got to hang on to this. We got to well, lock yeah, it you've down. always been a little concerned conspiracy theory ish booza oh, so i i go i went with you and should, i could i could kind of see I, it coming should i tell him about the bird flu story no we, we, we're not going to talk yes about i should that. tell him so back in the day when we used in florida when the first bird flu came it was like 2007 Ooh, eight or no, no, 20, no, no, 2004 no, no. 25 five, 20, five five six five yeah, six we had a little garden out back and i was really kind of paranoid about this she like, was super paranoid i was so paranoid about the bird flu and i was like there's no bird flu here so one of our neighbors lost two chickens and they were in our garden and I was freaking out. I'm like, he, these birds are going to kill us. He was like, these birds are going to give us bird flu. I was like, they're the neighbors, like hens. They're going to be fine. Well, then you're, he was literally like, was he's, he's this huge, I was like the giant stomping after, you know, Jack and the beanstalk. Oh, I mean, uh, you were like trying to get these chickens. I, I, I like imagining the Benny Hill. Especially when I was chasing them around with a coat hanger, trying right, to hook trying the to, leg. Trying to hook their feet. Yeah, so I can put them in a cat carrier and Give them, back to the <laughs> give, them to, give them back to the neighbor. Here, take your death away, neighbor. Oh my gosh, it was very funny. Anyway, so I have always been a little 
a little apprehensive about well so pandemic. even though we yeah. did kind of see some of the writing on the wall coming so for me that's why i always say but it. we've only really been in lockdown yeah. for about a, a year and two months even though it feels like so that's why, forever that's why i say a year and a half <laughs> <laughs> anyway so let's talk a little bit about the gains i mean you know there are silver linings and the first one i think we've heard through a lot of the um the, the stories and, and and the, the 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 COVID journeys that we've interviewed about, and also ourselves, we've seen it's just the closeness that we've we've mm-hmm. we've seen. We and like in, uh, imposed slowing down. You had to you had to quit the rat race, both with work, with school, with activities. Everybody had to take a breather and say, "Whew, okay," you know. Yeah, especially when you know we interviewed Rebecca. She she talked a little bit about the slow the slow food movement and how that maybe. We we've been kind of in the slow homestead, slow homeschooling, slow mm-hmm. slow COVID family thing where we get to appreciate things a little bit more. We're not, we don't have that kind of that sense of rat race or the gerbil hamster wheel, where we're kind of just running as fast well, as yeah. we possibly can. It, it did slow down. Sarah, you know, when we interviewed Sarah as well, she said she didn't just she didn't realize how miserable they were in that rat race until they yeah. didn't have to do it anymore, and so that. Slowing down of time, having more time to think, time to be together as a family. Exactly. That, you know, that was definitely something that was all not what we wanted, certainly. Um, but it has had some benefits, I think. Well, and one of the benefits is that you've been here so much. Right. And a that, lot of families, right? Parents yeah. working remotely or, um, you know, unfortunate if you weren't able to work any, you know, you weren't able to work remotely and you were just home. But it was more time that we all got to be together that we probably won't get every you know, God willing, nothing like this will ever happen again. Uh, and so that was time. And and luckily, some of that's going to stay, right? Yeah. That this remote work, so many companies have found that they're no longer afraid to let their employees work remotely, that they're going to, you know, goof off and not, not get their job done because they were forced into it. And they they came to the realization that the employees that were poor employees at the office are also poor employees working remotely. <laughs> and the ones that were good at the office are, guess what? They're also good working remotely. And so it really changed the whole dynamic. You know, now my company and, and many, many others are going to let people work remotely permanently if they want to, to whatever degree they want to work remotely. Well, and it was something that I always, you know, I, I've mentioned it to you a few times, you know, just us talking is that, you know, you, I don't want to say you missed out, but you didn't see a lot of the, the development at this age, you know, with, with, our, our, older with our older daughter with, that you've full-time. gotten with our young daughter. I mean, really, from birth, maternity leave, you only were like working for about four or five months, I think it was. It was less than that. Yeah, less than that. Before then COVID kicked in and then we you were back home. So you've literally been with her, you know, from the, yeah, obviously from inception. <laughs> but, you know, obviously you have not missed a lot of time with her. And No, and I've gotten to see all the big all moments, and, which has been so wonderful. Well, and on top of that, you don't commute as far as, I mean, you know, we, we, we made some life decisions that, that eased up a little bit of our commute issues that we have here in the, in the east side of Seattle. But you don't have to commute 40 minutes a day every day. You know, you don't have that grind in the car. Now mm-hmm. you do... You know, I always remember I liked that quiet time where I could listen to podcasts and listen to music and stuff. You know, stuff. it's nice and balanced. And when we go yeah. back, that's what I'll do. I'll yeah. take, I'm going to work a couple of days remote and a couple of days at the office and take the best of both worlds. But it yeah. definitely... You're not um, sitting in the car. You're not, oh, there's an accident. It's going to take me an hour and a half to get home. Right. You don't have to go through right. that Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm not missing that. You know, I have I have lunch with my girls. I go on a walk every day, um, sometimes with one of our girls. I get to see him for breakfast. We every morning you come down to write, and I snuggle in our bed mm-hmm. with the girls for half an hour, and we all talk and they play, and th- I mean that's just time I would have had to be up and going because that's my commute time. <laughs> Normally I would have been on the road. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the the close knit nature of our family definitely it's it has been nice to be so much together. I mean sometimes. We're going to be honest. It drives us crazy to all be together because... Or what are you talking about? It's all roses and sunshine yeah, in the Booza household. Well, what are you it talking used about? to be that I got to go to work and... Not have to deal with it. Leave it to the husband. Yeah. It's well, not- and well, and this is the truth though, right? We made this decision that I was not going to be the stay-at-home parent for yeah, a couple of reasons. One, I really do like my job. I like working. I make a good salary. So it was fine for me to stay working. But the other thing is that I'm not really... 
a homebody. I'm much more social. I like seeing my friends at work. I like mm-hmm. having that interaction. I'm not good at being home with the kids all day. As much as I love the idea of homeschooling and all of that, we had always talked about this from the beginning, that you are much better at home than I am. Uh, so for me, this was a little bit of a hard adjustment to be here. You know, usually I got to like, you know, a few quick hugs in the morning and things and I was off to work. And then at night I would get some time with them and It was never maybe as much time as I wanted, but this is like so much time now. And there are times when I'm just like, you know, we're both like burnt out. Like, the oh, gosh, we've been with the kids all day and they're having a crazy day, you know. So everyone has those crazy days. Like today when you're like, was it as crazy as it sounded? Right. Yes. Yeah. It was. (laughs) I mean, over dinner tonight, we were like, how soon can we put them to bed tonight? How how early can they go to bed? (laughs) Because they were just having a crazy day and it happens to everybody. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a gain to be together all the time. It can also, boy, if you, those kids know how to push your buttons, which, you know, your kids, like our kids, they know how to push your buttons and, uh, yeah. they push and you're home all together. So push, push is more like mashing, right? Like pounding on the vest. Yeah. Yeah. As much as we love them, <laughs> love homeschooling, it, it can be a challenge to be together all it the can, time. And, and then, you know, maybe one of the bad things is it's hard to get away from that. Right. Cause we, right. we just have to deal with it. Right. And that's. It can create that anxiety. Right. We, that you know, issues, we both yeah. used to have our own uh, hobbies that we would go off and do independently. And I had work and you had, you know, your night off and your other friends you would see and different things. And we had other outlets and now it's all, it's all family all the time, mm-hmm. um, which has its pluses and, and minuses. Exactly. Um, next thing that we, we've seen is a lot of open-ended play without interruptions. Yeah, that's and, true. And this is like... You know, a lot of times if you can think back, like, oh, we have to go to dance class in a few hours so you can play or we'll do a couple lessons. We'll read a few books, but then we got to get going. We got to get moving, you know? Right. Homeschoolers, we tend to be very overscheduled, yeah. uh, honestly, because there's we're off during the day. And so there's a lot of things we can do with our kids. We've got meetups and co-ops and go we have friend, activities yeah. and yeah. we got go to go to the park, park yeah. and, you know, all the different things of meetups with friends and, and just there's lots of stuff going on. What I've been seeing, in, you know, with the kids in the last year or so is that they're able to play. Like today, they were building a fort in the living room with a bunch of chairs. And I did not, you know, there's literally no anxiety of like, we got to break this down. We got to get going and anything like that. So they can literally just have their whole play cycle until they're done playing with that. And then they move on to something else. There's nothing that's going to be there to interrupt them. Yeah. And I, I think that allows them especially when they're playing together and they're not trying to like smash each other in the face with toys and stuff you know when they're doing that that's some deep play and they're like really getting into it and really having that experience and and playing those games and you know those young you know that a lot of that kind of developmental gameplay that, yeah, that lots kids of imagination do. And, imaginative you know, play and kids approach the world through games and everything is a game that's why a lot of big there's a lot of you know efficacy towards the game schooling ideas that when kids play, they establish rules and they they play those rules out. And if you don't follow those rules, there are social checks. And that's a lot of the social development, especially when you got two kids playing, three kids, four kids. They check each other and it's because they're playing a game and they treat the world like a game. And there's a lot of science behind that, and a lot of psychology stuff. And it's really, really interesting to see that play out in the full play and giving them that ability to play it all the way out until they're done with it. Without any interruption, I I can't imagine what type of good brain development that is that is giving them a yeah. lot of the socialization that we always talk about. So, Agreed. next one is we've a lot of us optimized our the home spaces and the environment. Yeah, because like, we had to like live in it, and all of a sudden we were like, you know what, this room does not work the way work, that yeah. this was designed. This is not. We need to change this around. It's like for example, we did a lot of um, home DIY projects that kind of revitalized yeah. our living room into a very nice homeschooling space where there's nice lighting, there's bookshelves and all that type of stuff. We also got some new, um, we reorganized our homeschool room a little bit at the beginning of the pandemic to give a little bit more of a revitalization of that room, a lot more play space. We moved all the toys up there, but somehow they keep migrating their way down. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think they teleport. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But, you know, all the toys are up in that room. There's books downstairs. We remade our homeschool space. Oh, yeah, all of it. You know, everybody just really got got in touch with, how does my home work best for me? We had a lot of our neighbors, too, doing the same. Just, yeah. 
you know, remaking. And I saw lots of things on real homeschool spaces on the Facebook group there where people were really getting in touch with the best ways to use their homes now that they're, they're home more together. Well, so that was and, interesting. And, and our backyard accumulated a lot of toys and things and, and chairs and play spaces and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, tents. I'm sure everybody's and, dead. And, and based on the fact that we couldn't buy a, like a kid's picnic <laughs> table to save our lives just, last summer. You had to make your own. I'm sure everybody was, yeah, you're out, you're outfitting your home because you're, you're here more now. So mm-hmm. we find that now kind of as we're coming out of things, we're, we still have all that stuff here to enjoy, and um, it really has changed the way we use some of the spaces in our home and use them, use them more efficiently. More for efficiently, our I think, more purposefully. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of talks a lot about the gains that you might have seen, and you may have seen, you know, other things as well. Maybe like reduced stimuli on the kids, reduced stimulation and uh, you know, outside stimulation. The kids are able to focus a little bit more. Things of that nature. You may see something a little bit different in your homeschool environment. But really take the time to think about what those things might be because you may want to keep those. You may not want to let those go because you may see the benefit of those going forward. So let's talk about going forward. So the first one that a lot of us will have to think about is, you know, the schools are, are the schools going to be open in our area? You know, I, I know in our country, you know, we're getting a lot of vaccinations rolled out and everything and things are, they're starting to open things back up here and there. And you can really see that there's some commitments towards, you know, changes going mm-hmm. forward to the fall. But in other countries, you were just talking to someone today that, you know, their country, 2% of the people have been vaccinated. So it's like, what's the chance that they're going to be going back to school in the fall? Yeah. Probably and not, and right? again, this uncertainty, right? Are, yeah. are schools going to be open? Are you going to send your kid back to school, a full-time, part-time, parent partnership? Yeah. Uh, you know, this is the time of year normally when we're doing all of our planning for the next year and we're getting our curriculum and we're looking forward to the fall, you know, we're almost off for this year for the summer, or, you know, even if you go through the summer, a lot of us year round homeschoolers will, you know, go a little lighter in the summer than we would during the, the heat of the regular school year and all that planning. It's like, how do you go forward and plan? And, and will they have the experience that you want to have? Are they going to be sitting behind plastic desks and mm-hmm. wearing masks all day and socially yeah, distancing and, and not know. allowing to go and interact in the school? And that may not be what you want for your kids to do. Like they may be going back full time, but they may not be going back in the same way that you expect them to go. And that may be an issue to your learner or to you, for you as a parent. You may not want that for them and you may con- want to consider keeping them home for another year, that type of thing. So those are things you want to consider, but also preparing for what's coming up. Are you going to go full-time back to school? Are you going to go part-time? We've heard that talked about. Or have you found a parent partnership in your area that you would like to prefer to use instead of the public schools? Also, are there co-ops and are those co-ops going to be opening back up? Or yeah, Are they even operational? Are the preschools open? Are the forest schools open? You have to begin to do that planning now and think about what, what I mean, opportunities are. Typically, we would be registering for, I mean, this is public school registering time, but like for preschools and things, all that was back in February, yeah. right? At this point, but but in February, we didn't know what was coming up for this next school year. So it makes your choices awfully difficult, uh, honestly. And, and I think it's it's one of those things that you'll have to keep in touch with your local Facebook groups are probably one of your best resources for your local co-ops and meetups and things and who's doing what. I imagine that there might be new co-ops starting depending exactly. on who's been vaccinated or who feels comfortable with what there may, you know, you may have done a co-op that was very indoor based. You might have somebody else who's going to be like, Oh, just, you know, I got to do something. I'm going to start an outdoor based co-op for mm-hmm. this next year. There might be some new things. We have a local moms group here. We have, uh, and we have several local homeschooling groups on Facebook. And even if you're not a Facebook person, you don't like Facebook. I, I think it's still right now anyway, the best source of current information. And, you know, if you put a call out there and say, Hey guys, I don't know what I'm going to do this next school year. Um, you know, my, my parent partnership's not opening or I want to homeschool, but I do definitely want to be a part of co-ops who's starting what you might find. You get a group of parents together who will start a pod or something, um, all together. But I think this is a point where we have to reach out to the community now that things are maybe starting to open back up and, and find out what your options are next year, because we can't rely on official sources of data. Like in a normal year, you could just do a Google search for the co-ops in your area or the school offerings in your area. And now everything is so 
I'm, I'm going to use the word higgledy piggledy. <laughs> it's so higgledy piggledy right now. I don't think that we anyone knows. That well, was your old word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the, well, and also on top of that, people saw so much creativity explode out of this pandemic with respect to education. And people saw that there were so many options that they maybe never even thought about that were right. something they could do or that something even for a lot of people, they didn't even know if certain things existed. And new things have been created during yeah, the pandemic exactly. that didn't exist before. There could be a new co-ops in your area that you didn't have before that, that have sprung up. So yeah, that, all kinds of things. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff. So you may want to start to do that groundwork now. You may have missed registrations, but there may be like waiting lists and stuff that you maybe want to get yourself onto. Definitely start to look into that because... There are so many great opportunities out there. You never know what's out there. Yeah. And we feel for you because, man, what a difficult time to plan. Yeah. I, you, you know, having a plan for anything this next school year is like, ah, good, you know, best of luck to everyone. It's <laughs> really, a t it's a tough thing. We feel, we feel the pain. Yeah, exactly. Um, next thing, understanding that as you move forward this year, um, no matter what country you're in, if you're starting to do a little bit of a reopening and, and things are starting to slack and you're able to you know, go and see people and start to do things. Understand that that's, you have this new normal, which is the COVID normal, which is whatever life you've been living in the COVID time period. Obviously it's going to be increased and, in, you know, post that, whatever the new normal is and, and the rising new normal, hopefully reaching eventually back to the old normal, that is going to create an, an a load on your family. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's returning to, you know, scheduled, events you may feel like you're over scheduled and it may be less than what it was before the pandemic right it may take you a little bit of time to acclimate into the waters of of the schedule you know that and, you that and, you'll have and to be honest with you like i'm i'm feeling that just a little bit like a year a year and a half ago um i didn't feel any pressure like oh it's a normal day whatever and i had a baby at that point and I was like, yep, let's get going. Let's move. Let's get out. Let's go to your activities. Let's do these things. No big deal. Go with the flow. And I'm just getting back into, okay, she's going to two days a week preschool and I have two activities in the afternoon that I don't have to do anything for except sit in the car and read my book. And I'm feeling a little of that, like, I feel like I'm overscheduled a little bit or I feel like I don't have enough time. And it's like a fraction of what it was before the pandemic. And so I'm feeling that and I know other families will probably feel something similar. So be prepared for that as you get back into your activities. Maybe don't jump whole hog into everything <laughs> the, the yeah. first moment that you can. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's, I, I, I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're starving or if you're, or if you're very, very thirsty, right. You know, the survival stories, you don't go and eat a huge meal or drink a ton sick, of water yeah. cause you'll get sick. So, um, you know, maybe kind of just take it in waves. I think it's, it's one thing for us to say, oh gosh, things are opening back up. Go back into everything. You know, you want to give your kids everything, but um, just just be aware that it might be difficult for you and them to readjust to, you know, getting back to, getting back to quote unquote normal. Um, the next one is, you know, are you staying with homeschooling? Is this something that you enjoyed to doing? Is this something that you wanted to do? Oh, I'm seeing this question yeah. come up and, everywhere. And how, and specifically, we, we've heard this before in some of our interviews, how will your children take it when their friends return to school? Mm -hmm. And is that going to be a problem? Are you going to have some angst there? They're going to want to go back. And is that going to jive with what you want now for your kids? Because you think, oh, my kids made so many gains this year. I loved homeschooling. That's something I want to do forever from now on. But what if the kids don't want to do it? And have you had yeah. those conversations with your children yet? And have you you know, s understood what they're thinking and what you're feeling and, and trying to find that happy middle ground? There was a mom on Reddit the other day, and she was asking about, you know, she's worried about planning for preschool and doing all these things and she wants to homeschool and do all these you know great things and she doesn't know what to do and she's worried and she's she's angsty and she doesn't know if her kid's gonna like it and and this or that and i was like you know the one thing you need to realize is there's so many opportunities out there and you'll find something that will mesh with what works best for your kid mm -hmm. and what works best for you and there's a middle point there and you could still do homeschooling but you could do a parent partnership like what we're doing or you can do a co-op or you can do, you know, a, a pod or, or something of that nature. And the, and the kid will be happy with that. And then mm -hmm. it makes you happy as well. You know, understanding, are you going to homeschool and how is it going to affect your children going forward? 
And there may be options that you, you know, you haven't thought of if you, you know, go back into our last few interviews with first year homeschoolers, you know, we talked with one mom and they're going to be, you know, signing up for just half time at the regular school with just a couple of classes, right? So you can do that too. I mean, there's there's options um, mm-hmm. that you might not have considered as well if your kids are, I mean, definitely missing their friends. And some people are thinking like, well, I liked homeschooling, but it was kind of isolation. And I think if I had the opportunity to do it, quote unquote, the right way or the real way with mm-hmm. with the, the, the meetups and the co-ops and things that my family would really like it, should I do that? I've seen a lot of people just kind of, you know, real unsure about how they're going to go forward this next year. And I think a lot of good advice has been given about trust your gut and you, you know, the public school will always be there. Mm -hmm. You can always enroll. (laughs) That's what I, that's the comment that I always (laughs) make. It's not going away. And if you think that you might want to continue that in the fall, you want want to continue homeschooling and you're just not sure, maybe it would be, it'd be better if your kids were back in public. You can always try homeschooling. And if it's just not the right fit for your family anymore, the school will always be there. (laughs) Um, But it's hard if you go back to the school, yeah, then you'll kind of never be able to answer that question. Uh, And I, I kind of think this is this time period has been it's been good for homeschooling and bad at the mm-hmm. same time, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of folks who never thought of themselves as homeschoolers who got the opportunity to do it and who really like it or see a lot of positive things. But on the flip side, um, it's gotten some negative views because uh, the kids don't get to see anybody, you know, so isolating and um, they're not feeling a sense of community and some of these other things. And gosh, is this what homeschooling's really like? And no, that's not what it's really like. So uh, I think it's, it's a mixed bag, but if it's something that you think that your family would like, um, I would just always say you, you can always go back. <laughs> you, 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 if it doesn't work for you, do it for a semester. If you don't like it, there's always, there's always options. There's, there's puts and takes with both of it. Exactly. Right? With both ways. Um, the last one is kind of a double, it's like kind of the same issue on both sides. Um, going back and things opening back up, understanding that there may be some behavioral problems with your kid, with the mm-hmm. anxiety and the change now going, kind of surging back and, I bet a bunch of kids are going to have anxiety. But also on the the yeah. other side is not maybe issues with your kids. You know, obviously there will be some some anxieties that you'll have to deal with and social anxieties that may may crop up in the year or fears that they may have. But also concerns about other people's kids, and we have no idea how their homes, you know, how their life last year and a half went with right. their family. And is there going to be an increase in bullying? Is there going to be an increase of like? lashing out and disruption and mm-hmm. things of that nature so not that you know we're saying oh that's going to be a hellscape <laughs> mad, no, no, that's it's not, not going to be a mad max back in the uh back in the public schools or in, in any school whatsoever or in activities in as activities well. as well yeah you may see this in the activities but just to be concerned not concerned but be aware and just be you know look for it and make sure you're you're, you're attentive in those first six to twelve months as your kid is slowly reintroduced back into society you know, as we all are reintroduced back into society if you think about it it's like we're all, we've all been on lockdown and right. we're all coming back out and we're all seeing each other again and we don't know how it has affected some people and it's you may true. see some anxieties you may see um fears and 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 people might be more shy or they might be a little bit more you know crazy and and, and over the top and we don't. We know there's been a lot of increase in mental health issues and, and a lot of mental health issues with children as well, and we don't know how that's going to play out mm-hmm. with social inter- interactions, friends, and activities, and going back to school or co-ops or anything that you may interact with. So it, you may want to ground yourself and understand and maybe talk with your your learner about that there may be some problems out there. And they may have to be a little bit more adaptive to those types. Right. Of things. We just all have to give each other a lot of grace here because exactly <laughs> there's um you know, we're all, everyone's doing their best and it's going to take time for your kids and other kids and activities and, and meetups and different things to acclimate back to, back to life. So and that's one of the things that we tried to communicate to our daughter was just, you know, she said, oh, well, so-and-so was acting out at dance class and they weren't listening. Look, that little girl has been locked in her house for a year, you know, just, yeah. it's okay. Just, just go on with it. You pay attention to the dance teacher. Don't worry about it. 
Um, you know, just we're trying to really talk to our daughter about just being super kind, very attentive to her teachers and her activities Mm -hmm. and, you know, try to just, it's been hard. This has been hard on everyone. Everyone's had a different situation. And I think we're going to realize as people come out of this, you know, even if you felt like you were okay during the quarantine time, when you come out, you you know, some, some issues may catch up with you that you didn't really realize of how you felt. And it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of mixed up emotions, so we can all just be really kind to one another through this whole process. Yeah, re- really, you know, taking that stoic mentality where you don't know what the other person is going through. Like, oh, that jerk just cut me off on the road, and he's a terrible human being, and I'm going to honk my horn and be angry at them. But you don't know if they're trying to race to get to the hospital because they have a family member that's hurt. Yeah, right? you, just you don't understand. Know. You don't know what's going through the minds of those other people and their activities and their behaviors. And yes, they should be you know more considerate and nice and stuff. But we don't know what's going on, mm-hmm. and so it's really important us to give a little bit, like as you said, a little bit more grace to people. You know, be a little bit more accommodating, um, be a little bit more patient. Um, you know, I had my first meet up with a bunch of vaccinated people, some of my writers friends, and you know, being at a table with a bunch of people that are talking and talking over each other and doing this and that. Um, you get that little bit of anxiety where you're like, oh, this is a little crazy. And it was just, we're just talking, right? And yeah. and you don't, that may be magnified going forward. And, and that may be something your kids experience when they're in a classroom. A bunch of kids are yelling, right? They're not, they're not used to that level of noise, let alone, <laughs> you know, the, the craziness, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think too that it's yeah. easy to judge. And so trying to, uh, you know, tell our daughter not to, you know, not to judge. Everyone's going to have different levels of comfort when, Mm -hmm. when we're come back, you know, so if she sees somebody that's outdoors by themselves and they're wearing a mask, I don't want her to judge, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody has, we've been saying this for a year, everyone assesses risk in their own way, right? right? Everyone has their own risk scale. Um, And so I just don't want, I don't want her to judge. And, you know, I don't want, if they, if they say that no masks are required in schools at some point and some kids are still wearing them, I don't want her to be judging those kids, you know, in in her preschool or anything. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a really rough time. And these are our best ideas. We just, we had a long conversation the other night about this and we really tried to take stock of what has this last year plus <laughs> meant to us and what how did how do we think it's affected us you know what are we surprised by and what do we think going forward we should be aware of and so we just wanted to share this with you these are these are just our thoughts we're and you may have different not, ones and, you know experts or anything but we'd really, love to hear what you have to yeah, say yeah we would love to and, and really just sit down you know think about what you've gained what you've lost and and what may be coming out in front of you It'll give you a great game plan going forward. Yeah, and, I think it helped ground us yeah, and, when we had that discussion. Go, having a game plan is a good thing. And yeah, yeah with, it's with, never a bad thing, even though it may completely change. Yeah, right, the Mike, Mike Tyson thing, right? Everybody's got a game plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. I mean, you know, we never know what's coming. I think that's, yeah. I think if there's anything that we have learned over this last year, it's that we, yeah, we just have to try to go with the flow a little bit. We we can't predict um, and, and try to instill in our kids that same, you know, flexible, flexible mentality. So let's end this the way we always do. We'll try to be quick here. It was a little long and, and dense of a podcast. Um, so what we're into this week is thanking the people who make things. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is not a, a backdoor way of asking for reviews, but it would be really nice if you head out on YouTube, onto iTunes and leave us a nice review. That'd be great. But actually going out <laughs> and thank you. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. And, and join the uh, Game School Co-op if you can. Um, if you have books or, you know, you have videos or you have things that your family enjoys, and we'll, we'll talk about the one we like, but going out and thanking that creator on social media or sending them an email or you know reaching out to them in some way and telling them that your young learner likes this thing you can we we realized this week how how much that warms their hearts mm-hmm. and really you know as a creator myself as creators ourselves it's really nice to hear the good feedback and it, it keeps us going it kind of it's, it's the coal and the fire and, <laughs> you know for us and it, we really like hearing that this week ariel um liked a, a 
you know, I think it was an old post about the Renly series. Right, we've I talked about the Renly series before. Posted, yeah, yeah. that the, we had bought some books for the Renly series, and we we had the pre order of the latest book just came in this week, and the illustrator uh, Robert McPhillips was on Instagram, and he noticed that, and he said. I really hope that, um, you know, book 16 came out. I said, oh, yeah, we just got it. And he said, I really hope that your daughter um, really likes it. And I reached out to him. I, I messaged him afterwards. And I said, oh, you know, she's loving it. And he said, oh, you know, it makes me so happy to hear that makes she's, thing, yeah. she's enjoying it. And I said, well, when I told her that you you personally wished that she really enjoyed it, and um, he said he said something. There might be a, a hint about one of the characters in the next book. And she was so excited. And she just said, gushed how much she loved his drawings. So I told him, I said, oh, you, you know, you really made a five-year-old's day by um, by telling her that you that you personally hoped that she she liked your your book. And um, he said, well, you've made my day. She, <laughs> tell her she's made my day by loving it so much. And so it was just it was just a small thing. I never really thought I'd be able to connect with this person who's illustrated all of these books. And, um, but he was really lovely and it, and it seemed to really matter to him yeah. and he was really appreciative and he pointed us to a really cool video that shows, uh, how his drawings are made. And so that was just, a. it was really great. It was really great of him. And, and I, I was reminded, it just reminded us that thank the people that if you really enjoy their work, sometimes I think like they're too big, like, you know, somebody who, I mean, I think the Renly series is published by Scholastic. Yeah. It's like, right. I just think of that as just like unobtainium, um, yeah. but they're real people. And it does mean a lot to them to hear that, you know, your child really enjoyed something that they created. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time, happy homeschooling!